It's yet another uh, thank furlough. It's Friday. I'm going to slip up and say something else one of these days. But anyway, um, I'm sorry we are uh, two or three minutes late in starting, uh, but that's my fault. Uh, I've just been on a Zoom to our new office in Mumbai, and I closed it down instead of realizing that we were going to come on to the same thing. So hello, everybody. It's nice to uh, almost see you, but it's nice to be with you, coming to you in your homes, offices, garden, sheds, or whatever. As always, <clears throat> I have... Uh, somebody along with me who's, who's going to actually do most of the work today. We actually have a different person today. We have somebody called Jackie Mount, but she's actually uh, not the Jackie Mount that was. She uh, is now vice president of ICB, Jackie Mount. So how about that? As, as from uh, Tuesday, uh, she was uh, appointed a vice president of the organization, which means that I have to bow even lower when I talk to her now, but uh, much deserved and in recognition of many years of uh, two things really, uh, putting up with me, which is the main one, but also of course being our, a cornerstone of ICB. Anyway, Jackie, I seem to be um, Boasting about you and saying wonderful things about you. every time I open up. I'm going to have to stop now. That's it. You're done. So anyway, how are you? I can't hear you. You're on mute. You're still on mute. Go. Right. Sorry about there that. That's great. So not often I'm on mute. <laughs> well, I thought perhaps it, uh, for once you were lost for words. But I no, was. No. Yes, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm not sure if I've got it yet. I had um, an absolutely, oh, I've got it here, I'll show you. I'm going to show them the telegram that arrived. Is that all right, Gary? Yeah, yeah. I had, can you, can you read that? Or it's not that front. I received uh, an absolutely fantastic telegram uh, the other day from uh, June and Gary to uh, inform me so yes that's as Sir Kirsty said it was a lovely birthday present as well so thank you all for your comments coming in on the chat line so yeah very touched well only uh, one other vice president that's Mr Leslie Ellis who Leslie likewise Ellis, yes, uh, yes. a huge portion of his life to the institute so uh, and he did actually uh, say to me when he saw it he said oh I'm not the only one then I'm not unique anymore so I said no uh, this is it. yeah we have two vices uh, but anyway yeah, absolutely no, it, <laughs> at least patients, much yeah. deserved um, Thank now you. that doesn't mean that Jackie is disappearing off or anything like that. She is vice president, but remains a director of uh, technical. Um, yeah. What is it? Technical, technical technical policy? policy I think it is. It's. Um, That's it. I think it covers everything else that nobody does. <laughs> No. <laughs> so, um, but we haven't got anything more to give from the chest, so I'm afraid that's it now. So you, that's fine. No, that's absolutely one. perfect. That will see me out nicely. Thank you very much. Um, right. right. Okay. Um, not a huge amount to announce today. Most of it is sort of uh, uh, sort of housekeeping messages, really. Um, I most a lot of what I've got to say today is actually up on our website already. If you um, look on the news items a lot of what i'm saying has already gone up there so there's quite a lot of items there so a lot of information gone up on our website under the news in the last week that everyone's put up so most of what i've said is there just so what i will do is i'll just touch on some of the things that i've picked up on this week um there is something called the prompt payment code now what the prompt payment code is um is a code that businesses sign up to so that they agree to pay small and micro businesses promptly and the length of time that they've signed up to is 60 days now quite a lot of businesses are still not paying their small uh, contracts uh, subcontracting businesses quickly so they've actually shortened the length of the period in which people agree to pay down to 30 days and they're trying to get more and more companies and large businesses to sign up to this um so hopefully for very small businesses um the payment periods should actually uh shorten hopefully that will improve i know we're all in a difficult cash flow situation at the moment and there's lots of things going on but hopefully that will, will soon improve um a reminder that the furlough claims um closed for the december furlough claims unless you wish to make an amendment to that 
but the January furlough claims period is now open. So if you're making a claim for your January furlough, uh, you can do this from now on and, and do it slightly in advance if you're paying at the end of the month. So that one's open. Um, and if you have made a late application for any of these monthly claims, what's appeared this week is uh, you can actually put in a late application, um, just providing that you give a reasonable excuse. Now, obviously, COVID is a reasonable excuse that you've not been able to do your paperwork and things. And if you go on to gov.uk and search for claim for wages, um, there is some information on there. But when you go in and make a claim, if you can now do a late payment um, and hopefully uh, you, that will, will still go through. Um, a quick reminder that uh, 31st of January is rapidly um, approaching. And for those of you who do self-assessment tax returns, you will be well aware of the deadlines for that. Now, we've spoken about this in the last couple of weeks, and there are, um, I've had some queries in about, uh, have HMRC extended the deadline for that? Well, no, they haven't extended the deadline because they don't want people to accept that they don't have to do their tax return by the 31st of January. But what they won't be doing is issuing any penalties if you are doing a late submission on the self assessment tax return because of COVID and other, you know, reasonable, um, uh, other reasons. Um, the one thing it's worth checking is that now that we're up to almost the end of January, um, there's only two months left to go to this for the current tax year. And if you are doing your accounts for your clients on a regular basis, it may very well be that this year's income has gone down, notwithstanding the COVID grants, because obviously that counts as income in the 2020-21 uh, uh, financial tax year. But if when you do your return for uh up to march 20 so that's the one you're doing this week you will be asked you will be given a payment on account now if you know that the current year's income is going to be reduced you can don't forget you can apply for a reduction on the payment on account and that will reduce the amount that's due on the 31st of january you know anyone that's doing self-assessment tax returns will realize that and have done that and that will be sorted um but don't forget if you do do a reduction uh in the payment for account and the tax for next year ends up being higher than you anticipated, then there could be interest and possibly a penalty, but certainly interest to pay on the, uh, the non-payment of a payment on account. So that's that one. Um, there's a lot going around on the newsletters and from HMRC about tax avoidance schemes, scams. Now we've spoken with Gary about tax avoidance schemes before, yeah that we should not be getting involved in these at all, no way, nowhere, no how, never. Um, tax avoidance, don't forget, is where you sign up to some form of a scheme which <coughs> sells you reduced tax. Now, it's not things like going to your client and saying, well, you've got quite a lot of cash this year, if you're lucky enough. So therefore it might be a good idea to buy a new vehicle before the end of the tax year, and then you can claim your capital allowances on it. That is not a tax avoidance scheme. That is a perfectly legitimate tax allowance and there is a difference to that. So be aware that there are quite a lot going around. A um, lot on HMRC about trying to stop this and um, there's been lots of things going around um, for these. I think we, I think ICB put a, an answer in a document in for, for one of the consultations on this uh, towards the end of last year in October, November, and we're just waiting for the outcome of that. And the only other thing really that I've got to say is um, there is a lot of information around in the press and the news about the current problems with customs, duties, traveling across, importing, exporting, VAT problems. And um, I'm going to be covering this in more detail on Tuesday uh, when I do an online selling, but I've got quite a few bits to do with that. But do be careful. What's happening at the moment, just very briefly, what's happening at the moment, and I'm talking about perhaps if you go online and you buy something online, as we all do on a regular basis, you do need to be very wary uh, if the goods that you're buying comes from an EU country, because what's happened is there's a lot in the papers about it today, um, is that the EU countries are still charging, in some cases, fat at their rate. So they'll charge you French, Italian, Spanish fat, which they should no longer be doing. They should be charging you U, U, e, sorry, they should be charging you UK VAT to count for the import tax. Now, what's happening is 
that people are buying things online. They're still being charged EU VAT, which they can't reclaim because it's not a VAT registered business that you're, you know, that's buying it. But when it arrives at the border in this country, um, some of the freight forwarding companies are paying import VAT and still charging you UK VAT as well. And on top of that, they are charging fees for all the importation document. And there was one item in the paper today where an individual paid 240 pounds, I think, for some clothing that's come from a French company. And she's ended up being charged nearly 80 pounds for taxes, duties, fees, and other VAT charges. Um, and basically what a lot of people are doing now is they're refusing to accept the parcels rather than pay the tax. Because this is something that the uh, delivery company will say to you, you need to pay this before we deliver the goods. So they're going to be impounded in, uh, in, a, in a customs warehouse somewhere until you can pay it. So watch out for that. And I will be covering that in more detail on Tuesday. So that's all I've got. So let's see if we've got any questions. Can we well, I've just had a prompt here from uh, uh, June, who's always my source of information, saying you were, I was going to mention that, of course, uh, there were two vice presidents appointed this week, the other one being uh, Kamala Harris in the USA. But <laughs> I, I was going to mention it, but I thought I didn't want to uh, trump you up anymore. <laughs> so I was just biding my time. So I'm oh. like, and never mind. I get I get I get there. Get that bit in there. Nice uh, one. Have a look. I mean, most of these are just going to be congratulating you, I think, which is oh, all very nice. There's a lot of uh, thank you. It's a Philippa lot Cox. Just pick, try and pick out the questions. Karen Haggerty. Um, Julius Smalley, uh, Deborah Hughes, oh, I don't know, I'm stopping it here, is there really? Uh, Nicola Payne, Nadine Harrison, who's that? Desi Co, Paul Ingram, Joe Wheeler, Susanna Whelan, <laughs> oh, Kirsty Stingen. Oh, lovely oh, regulars. Kirsty has remembered it was also your birthday. So, what? Yeah, she sent me a lovely email in the week. She sent me a lovely email in the week. Yeah. You have to get very old. You have to be very old to get one of those, though. Well, that's um, the, I'm a cheapskate, you see. So we gave you a vice presidency instead of a big <laughs> president. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I did. I had presents. I had flowers and all sorts you did. of things. You also had a nice uh, a bottle of um, slightly non alcoholic bubbly, but which will go down probably tomorrow night, actually. I think we're going to celebrate tomorrow because Tuesday wasn't really a good day to celebrate. But, um, and presumably yes. a party later in the year. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because I've, like everybody else, haven't seen the family for yonks probably since uh, Eat Out to Help Out. I think we probably got together once during that. And that's probably the only time I've seen all the family this year, like everybody else. So, yeah, we're planning a huge party. But now it looks as though it's been offset till next year with the way it's going. I understand well, we the Prime Minister. Say congratulations as well. But I think we've got an actual query here. Kiwi 66 yeah. says congratulations. But then. Do we know how and when empl an employer can arrange time to pay for the one VAT month they were allowed to defer? Um, well, if you're going back as to uh, the, the, the VAT you deferred in March to June, then the deadline for paying that is, I think, at the end of March. However, there is a possibility to take your VAT deferred payment and extend it over a period of 11 monthly direct debits. You will have to apply for that. It's not an automatic extension. So do go online on look in your VAT account and see if you can defer it further and pay over 11 monthly installments. That is that's uh, now available to you, but you do have to apply for it. You can't automatically assume that you're going to get it. But Kiwi 66 is apparently Faye Watkins. She's got a different number there. My client forgot to ask me to do a claim for November, December 20, which has gone to a tech team at HMRC. That sounds interesting. To decide if late claim allowed. We couldn't say any of the reasons were applicable, but on the basis of claims being done from March each month, we are keeping our fingers crossed. It's a sole director. Yeah, so that, uh, Faye, hopefully that will go through. I mean, the COVID is, is an excuse. You know, they are saying if you do a late submission, then they will accept it. But all you can do is, is hope that uh, that will go through. OK, Faye. Donna Hammond says congratulations, Jackie, obviously. But uh, can you just tell me what it is you're doing on Tuesday? Because you've said something about that. So yeah, what, is what I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to be doing the fourth of the series of basically Brexit webinars. And this one is to do with online selling. And we're actually going to be covering not only selling abroad and we're going to be covering what happens if you as a business either buy or sell from an online platform, which are things like Amazon eBay, Shopify, those sort of things, and all about setting up a shop on there and how the VAT implications have changed. 
because um, it's not only have we got Brexit, but also the rules of online marketplace selling have changed at the same time. So we've got a double whammy on this one. So I'm going to be going through the basics. What I will say is we're still trying to sort out the actual bookkeeping side of this and how it's going to work. Again, there was lots in the paper about it today, online selling and the, and the situation. So I'm going to try and see if I can demystify um, selling on an online marketplace. Um, the notes will all go up. We haven't put anything up on the Brexit Hub yet, but it will go up on the Brexit Hub once I'm happy with everything I've got to say. So we've done quite a lot of updating to that again this week on Import Export Flat. So that's what I'm doing on Tuesday. Dean Youngman says, do you think that HMRC might change the requirements for a holiday lets to be let for 105 days to qualify for the special treatment? If you speak to them, could you ask them to consider it? I have got a query out already on this, um, D, and I will chase it up because it's uh, something because obviously um, they've because pe no holiday lets have really been happening. It has changed the regulations to what you can um, fall within. So uh, I, I will check. I will chase that one up again, D. I noticed last night on the uh, ministerial briefing, Priti Patel was asked whether she felt it was right that people were booking up for summer holidays already and early uh, sort of spring breaks forwards. And, and she was basically saying that it's too early to start booking anything at the moment. They don't know. They, they can't. Uh, the crystal ball is uh, hazed up a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, there's, there's a lot of people now pushing for holidays. It's difficult, I think, at the moment, isn't it? There are a lot of people want the lockdown to disappear because they want to go out and meet people and greet yeah. people and holidays. And then you've got the other side saying, well, hold on a minute. No, I want you to keep lockdown because it's obvious from the figures that uh, uh, it's still yeah. rife out there. I mean, the, the deaths yeah. are still, unfortunately, rising very rapidly. But anyway. Well, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yes, I, I was going to say, following up on that, we had a Christmas holiday booked, uh, which got transferred to May. And now that's been transferred again to September. So. Um. Yeah, um, on a, a wider point, we had a discussion uh, with uh, the Advisory Council who met earlier uh, this week. Uh, the Advisory Council uh, invite members of the ICB executive in just to have a, a chat and they, they ask them questions and ICB, we give them an update of what's going on. Um, and one of the big discussions we had was what to do about conference this year. And to be honest with you, we came away not really any clearer than when we went into the meeting. We're not quite sure really what's going to happen in November, whether no. it will be great, whether the you know the world will be open, whether there will be strain number five, six or whatever it is that's hitting the shores. We don't know. Obviously, it's the beginning of our 25th anniversary year. But as, as Council pointed out, it is the beginning of a whole year of being 25. So it may be that if we can't do anything on November the 1st itself, we might do something else. So. Um, we asked for a show of hands, and I think everybody said they would. If, if it's all very, if, if if things are working again in November, they'd love to have a face-to-face -face meeting. But uh, nobody was quite ready to put the hand in their pocket and put a deposit down. Um, and that's the problem that we've mm. got. Immediately we book somewhere up for November. You know, we have to put down something like hundred and ten, hundred fifteen thousand pound deposit, which I know we might get back, but it's a big chunk to take out if, in fact, we, we yeah. can't use it so i think we're, we're we're looking at all possibilities at the moment so if anybody's got any strong thoughts on that can you let me know that would be really great um message from lynn lynn b client claimed on the first two sales grants successfully they think the third grant closes next week but he's still not heard from hmrc reapplying advice please well, it needs to be applied for ASAP because uh, i know of uh, a few self-employed people who have never had a letter to say that they could apply for this and it's only because i knew them and i said by the way have you applied for your grant yet and they said oh no we didn't know we could so i would uh, get back on that lynn and say yes you need to get your application in uh, because the fourth grant uh, opens on the uh first of february now i meant to watch the money shop money program last night because i understand uh martin lewis was i think it's his name isn't it martin lewis was talking about the fourth grant now i have to say he must have slightly more inside track than I have because I haven't picked up on anything in it yet. And I'd intended to do that for today, but we've, um, I, I just haven't got around to it. So yes, the fourth grant is available, I think from some time after the 1st of February, but we don't yet know, or I don't know what percentage that's going to be. Now I would assume that it's going to be the same 80%. 
The reason being that the 80% for the, uh, the corona, the job retention scheme is still working at 80%. So I would imagine that the SAIS grant will be the same as well, but I haven't heard anything to the contrary yet. A few more congratulations. I mean, I mentioned some of them, so. Uh, yeah, no, thank Julia, you all. Molly, Deborah thank Hughes, um, uh, Kat Cowan, uh, Maggie B, congratulations. And then we've got Suzanne Proctor. There is no update on the monthly payments. Um, Suzanne, is that, the, uh, trying to think what I said on monthly payments, is that for um, the extended VAT, it might be? I haven't seen anything on that one. Okay. But what have we got on the main one there? I think we've covered, I think I've covered most of the ones on the main one, Gary. Yeah, D, D, Lynn. Yeah, okay, so uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, it might be um, a short, short, short meeting. Right, yeah, so it's over to you, Gary, because I haven't got much else to say today, which is very unusual. Well, I don't think I've got much to cover, really, other than, than my usual plea with everybody to be very careful out there. Uh, mm -hmm. And next week, obviously, uh, we've got Monday and Tuesday covered. Uh, we've got Friday. We are looking at filling in the whole week eventually, uh, not just next week, but on an ongoing basis. So we um, uh, we used to do lots of interviews with people and talking to people, and we've got a lot of uh, external advisors coming in, etc. Trying to get them all buttoned down at the moment is a little bit difficult, but we are hoping to do that shortly. So you will have the choice of five different days worth of, of activity. Um, I keep asking if anybody's got any ideas what they'd like to see, and uh, I don't think we've had very many through that I know of. Uh, one of one of them wanted us to do a, a keep fit session, which I think there is enough of that going on elsewhere. And uh, the the further request that I might do it certainly put that one completely out of the ballpark. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> no, no, thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank you, Jackie. Uh, anyway, so I'm not saying uh, no, I didn't say a word. I didn't say a uh, word. Actually, it's funny enough. We, I was I was saying to Jackie earlier, and, and it's blowing her trumpet again. But um, I tried to find some old photographs of us because I thought we we got together as a as um, as a as a team in a big zoo, which was a bit of a, a surprise for Jackie because she thought she was coming on to a technical uh, query and we all wished a happy birthday, etc. And I've been looking for some pictures of Jackie to go back and show her what she looked like because I've got pictures of me when I started the Institute yeah. and, you know, I, I, well, I'm half of a size for a start and uh, all sorts of various other things. Jackie looks exactly the same. You, <laughs> you, have, you have really not aged uh, at all. So I, you, you, no, you, I must admit, I, I was going, I was looking through I think one of the children asked me if I'd still got a copy of their birth certificate because they couldn't find it. And I was looking through my, I have a file of birth certificates and they, they go right back to 1900. It's all the family's paperwork. And I found the last two sets of passport photographs that I had taken. And yes, actually they, I could have used the old ones instead of having new ones for this year, but going back a, a while. So, but I think it, I think, I probably aged quite a lot in my 30s because there's a picture of me with my two children who were quite young and I do look very different there. Once they got to teenagers, I got to this stage and nothing else has happened. So I think I did my aging period in my 30s. I think that's probably mainly hair colour. You were, you were darker in those days, weren't you? Yes, I had darker hair in those days, yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought yeah. that one, but I thought that was <laughs> uh, Anyway, um, let's see if we've got anything else coming in. Uh, Uh, yes, Suzanne has come back and said it was on the deferred fact, so there's no update. Yep, that's yeah. right. Um, Dee Youngman says rather modest earrings, Jackie. Yes, I have today, actually. Yes, yes. I, I just, I've suddenly realised it was like, we've had, um, COVID notwithstanding, we've had some uh, workers in doing something on the extension at the back of the house, and we all outside, so it was all very COVID safe. And I have to say, they finished about five to two and went, so I, I just literally... Uh, dived in and great yes so they actually these earrings funnily enough um an old friend of mine bought them for my 18th birthday so they are very very old now and i'm still wearing them so yeah. uh right we've actually got um a question here uh did you find out how we need to treat vat on services purchased from the eu um I, yes, I've got a feeling if it's a business to business purchase, then it's going to be reverse charges. I think I'd, I've done a couple of technical queries on this one today um, because the EU treat it exactly the same, I think. And they 
the purchase of the service, I think, is still in the country. EU law still says that for a service, the service, I think, is in the country where the, the customer is. So therefore, I think it's going to come in as a reverse charge. Um, because right. you, um, they shouldn't charge you that. Right. Something to uh, pre-warn you. Uh, a while back, I contacted um, you all and uh, some of our uh, practices that are protect, uh, a little bit larger than most. Uh, the National Crime Agency is looking for £100 million pounds worth of funding. And what it's going to be doing is, is charging that out to accountancy, bookkeeping practices and everything else. Now, a fair bit of lobbying went on and we managed to get them to agree that nobody with a turnover of less than a million pound would be charged for this on the basis that I think we've got three of our members who have got a turnover of more than a million, but the majority of you are well beneath that. In fact, most of you come under the micro business limit, which is about 695,000 turnover, five employees. Um, but we've just had something back now from HM Treasury saying, uh, following other organisations' input, we've decided to just look at it again and see whether we should be charging people under the one million turnover. And they've asked us, they've given me a set of questions, and I've got to I have to forward the questions to you all. You know, it, it's what is your turnover? Does it fall within the following bands, etc.? Now, I, I'm afraid we're all going. You're all going to need to answer this question for me. I, it won't be too personal. I'll try and keep it within bounds. Uh, I'm going to give it you exactly as the treasurer of giving it to us because they want to make sure that we are not trying to keep you out of the net by saying that you're all earning twenty five pound a year instead of uh, two million five hundred thousand or something or other. So. Uh, that will be coming out. I'm not quite sure when it's only just come through. It came through yesterday. Uh, Steve Hardwick has tried to bat it back, but it's, it's been thrown back in his court. So that uh, we've been talking about that. Um, to, well, actually, we've been emailing about that. I haven't spoken about it yet. So I am going to need to ask you that. And it is one of the things that I think, although ICB does a lot more and has a lot more information about its members, one of the big bones of contention was always that we, we wouldn't ask you what your turnover was. We didn't think we got anything to do with us, but apparently we now have to ask. Uh, and they also think that we should be basing risk on turnover, um, which I think is a bit odd um, because what does it mean? If because you haven't got a big turnover, you're going to be a bit more risky or you've got a, uh, you have got a big turnover, you're going to be risky. I, I mean, it's a bit of a nonsense, but they need it anyway to make sure that they're not missing out on charging you an extra fee. So if you could cooperate um, with that, please give proper figures. I mean, obviously there'll be COVID based figures, but that doesn't matter. Um, and uh, at the moment, I think that that's as far as it will go, but we are being expected to ask and they haven't said anything about um, what percentage of our members must ask this. So I'm presuming they think everybody should answer this question. So I'm, I'm going to clarify it. It won't be coming out quite yet, but it will be coming out probably within the next week by the sound of it. I think we've got till the first week of February to give them an answer. So if you would help me, please, by cooperating, we are still fighting your corner. And the other thing is that there are a lot of people out there, as Jackie and I have mentioned to you so many times, who are actually unregulated. They're not part of a professional body. So actually, at the moment, that means they're not going to be asked to pay towards um, this, this uh, cost of, of monitoring and keeping the, well, it's actually the sort of the SARS regime, etc., um, so yeah, it, it, that, that's something that's coming out. It's, it's difficult, as I say, but unfortunately, I, um, I'm not going to get any choice on this, and, and everybody's going to have to do it. Uh, some of the big firms will be paying tens of millions of pounds towards the effort, so I'm, I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work out. But anyway, um, so a lot of the stuff that's going on in the background, we, we don't bring to your notice until it's inevitable that it's going to happen, and most of it we managed to fend off and lobby against, and um, Rather than boast about how wonderful we everything is, I sort of keep our head down a little bit on the basis that we don't want to be seen to be gloating, so uh, away it goes. But uh, there is a newsletter coming out. I believe it's coming out today. I have to admit that they're waiting for my blog, so it might come out without my blog, and my blog will have to trundle along later. I've been trying to put together some, some figures for the past year, 
um, and uh, show how uh, how well you've all been doing, generally speaking, and how many new new clients you've got, etc. I haven't quite got those figures to date yet, so I'm I'm going to come up with uh, we'll come up with something, but it might miss uh, the newsletter. Anything else come through? I yeah, see a couple of, of questions come in. Uh, Dee, thank you for your comment. I have to say that would not be at all possible because I have a 44 year old son. So I'm afraid your, your lovely comment down there is, uh, is, is a bit short of the mark there, my dear. Um, and Terry says, I'm concerned about the 2021 self-assessment tax returns. In respect to the grant income, we can only put in what people tell us. Are we exposed or how do we cover ourselves? Now, that's an interesting one, Terry, because it is actually formal income. So I, I don't know what evidence anyone, um, who's applied for the states grant there must be some form of documentation that says how much you're going to get now that sh that is going to need to be a source document so you need a source document because it's taxable income so i think you're quite within your uh bounds and it it may or may not have gone into the business account or whether it's gone into the personal account but if you're doing a self-assessment tax return that has to be declared as income therefore you have the right to see the uh, notification that came from HMRC and they will all have one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we've said yeah. this time and time again, it's it's the standard rule, it, COVID is no different. Um, you cannot assume that people are giving you correct figures, you've got to know where that's, it, it, it's something that, that's big, it's the source of income, where is it coming from? Are you entitled to it? Yeah. Have you mentioned everything that you've got? And if you're producing a set of forms, I'm afraid you can't, sign away your uh, liability by saying well um, they didn't tell me the point is you're supposed to ask and the fact that they write down and say this is everything again is not really good enough you know you have a very responsible position if you're doing somebody's tax and you do need to see accounts we yeah i would ask for the statement that's come up from hmrc there's got to be something that that they've had from hmrc which uh, confirms what the grant is going to be i think um, I, I don't know because I haven't seen one or done ones, but I would imagine there is. Um, um, something else popped up this week, actually. Um, I don't know if, if you've seen it, but one of our members was saying that, unbeknownst to them, somebody has set themselves up as a director of their company. And this can be done. You, you can register a, a new director with company's house with very little information. You do it online. So they're thinking this is some form of uh, COVID scam or, uh, you know, furlough scam or something rather. And having said, oh, yes, this is terrible. A lot of people on social media have been saying, yeah, this is happening all the time. You know, this is how people are claiming their grants. So um, sometimes okay. uh, people may be getting a grant claimed in their name that they don't actually know anything about. So there are scams around. Oh, and uh, whilst on, uh, just a uh, big congratulations to Chrissy Applin because it's her birthday today. Oh, so congratulations, Chrissy. She is a companion and fellow of the Institute. So congratulations, uh, Chrissy. Uh, yeah, we've had two birthdays in the Institute this week because it was Polly's birthday as well on Wednesday. So it was, yeah, yeah, we, yeah quite a few. Um, January is a good month for birthdays. To all Capricorn, I don't know. I'm rather Capricorn, but I think Polly might be Aquarius. I think she just tips over into Aquarius. Um, yeah. Okay, a question from Paula. This is an interesting one. I'd heard that the client had to have a government gateway account to apply for the fact that was deferred to be paid in instalments. One of my clients who did not have one tried to set up a gateway account, but it wouldn't let them as I was an agent for MTD VAT. Now that's not one I've heard of. Um, mm. I think you probably. I think anybody can set up their government gateway account. I think the fact that you're an agent, that's in addition. I'm wondering, Paula, if it's something to do with the way your tax agent account might have been set up. I'm not sure, because that's the the, the owners can, I would imagine, apply for a government gateway account for that. But I'll I'll look, I'll look into that, Paula, and I'll get back to you. Unless anyone else online has got some information on that. Yeah, I haven't come across that. Never mind. No. Uh, just thinking what's going on here. I, if that's the end of the questions, Jackie, I think we we can take an early bath, as they say. Um, I think so. I think that's all we've covered. Everything at the moment. So, um, yes, yeah, so it's actually been quite a quiet week this week. Yeah. Um, um, just to remind you, uh, something we were asked again at the, by the council is that the sessions from the 
virtual summit are still open, uh, but they will be closing on, and we believe, the 15th of February. So if you need to catch up on any of those, don't forget to do that, please. Um, and when I came onto ICB TV, uh, just check beforehand, but I think there are 46 of you online at the moment. So it, it's okay, good. sorry, Sorry, just a quick one. Paul has come back and said, um, thanks. I believe they could set up their gateway account, but when they ticked on the services for VAT, it wouldn't let them set it up because I'm the agent for VAT. Now, Paula, does that mean if you go on, if you log on, can you apply for the payment on account on their behalf? That I'm not sure about. Might be worthwhile trying to see if you can set it up, Paula. Uh, we've also, I mentioned our conference before, a couple of people have been saying, are we going to be um, at a Cantex this year? Well, a Cantex in London has actually been cancelled. Cancelled. Again, I think at the moment it might still be a Nightingale Hospital, I'm not sure. But they are hoping that the... I think they're using it as one of those major COVID centres, testing, well, uh, vaccination centres, aren't they now? I don't know. But, they had beds and everything, weren't they? The yeah, no, I think it's going to become a, one of the vaccination centres. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they are still hoping to do their northern version of it, which I think is in September. I think they normally do in Manchester. Uh, so um, if it's on, we'll be there. Uh, and if we, whether or not we have to stand so far away from it as to uh, not make a difference, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Paul has just come back and said she read that agents could not apply on their behalf, which is why I told them to set up a government gateway account. Um, I will contact, um, I think I know someone that with the MT, I'll contact somebody on the MTD team for that. I think I've got a contact there, Paula. So I'll try and find out AS, ASAB and get back to you quickly on that one. Right. Okay. Lovely. Done. Um, so again. Oh, Jackie, hang on. Sorry. One more. Oh, that now they're coming. Um, do you pay holiday staff to holiday pay to a staff member on furlough? Yes, you can do. If your uh, furloughed member of staff takes a holiday, you pay them the full one hundred percent and claim back eighty percent on furlough. So that's a quick answer to that one. Um, Oh, and Steph B must have a birthday in January as well, because she said January is a good month. OK. Well, anybody that's had a birthday this month and we haven't mentioned it, I do apologise. Happy just birthday to you all. I know of those, and we obviously know Jackie's and, and some of the members of staff here. But, uh, you know, if anybody wants a call out, don't forget, you just send us a, a message, either Facebook or, or online here. And, uh, you know, we'll do our best to give a call out. We'll try and mention as many as we can without it getting um, overpowering. But anyway, so, uh, yeah. I think that's probably it. Uh, yeah. Congratulations once again on the birthday. Thank you very much. And it was a big zero. It was a big zero. And I have to say, I, I, as Sujay, who you, most of you all know now, honestly thought I was ten, at least 10 years younger than Ethan. I was. So. <laughs> yeah. He's always been a creep. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Sarah Hawkins, her birthday is tomorrow. So, so that's just come up as well. So anyway, never mind. Um, we do send out a happy birthday note to everybody when it is your birthday. Um, and 99.99% of all people enjoy it. Uh, we occasionally get a complaint from somebody who says, I don't want a reminding. But uh, anyway, so um, if you are having a birthday this month, um, many happy returns. Uh, I understand from uh, Northern Ireland, they've decided now to have lockdown until at least March the 5th, I think it is. Uh, so if we do the same in this country, that's my birthday gone as well. But never mind. Um, you know, we, we will we will live to party another day, as they say. And Desi, I have your query. I will take that on board at ICB and try and get an answer to you on that one, Desi. Yeah, we'll we'll pick that query up, Desi, and deal with it internally. OK, so, I've got it, so you've got that one. Yeah, great. I've got that um, one. Yeah. OK, well, great. Well, I've got half a sandwich here that I need to eat for my late lunch, but never mind. So look. People, it's lovely to have you with us. Don't forget, it's uh, Mike on Monday, and now you've got uh, Technical Tuesday with Jackie as well this coming week. Uh, we're here again for furlough on Friday. Thank furlough, it's Friday. We may or may not have something on Wednesday and Thursday as well, depending on how quickly we get that together. But, uh, you know, it's all there. Don't forget, if you want to look at it later, you can do it. You can, you can pick it up later. You don't have to watch us live. Or if you're real gluttons for punishment, uh, you can go through it all again. But anyway... Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Jackie. And uh, thank you, thank Iris. You. And Claire, Claire, I've got your query. I'll get back to you on that one. Um, OK, thank you very much, everybody. 
and I'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. Bye. Bye.